Good morning. Uh, I am Samir Mehta and uh, I welcome you to the sixth session of the Complex Coronary Cases Live. Uh, uh, this should be another wonderful and exciting case. Uh, so far I have got some very useful statistics to share with you this morning. Uh, our uh, viewers increase uh, the number of paid views at the moment as now from the last count up to 2016 with the representation from 44 countries and uh, with Germany, Canada, India, United Kingdom and Australia being our most popular viewership. So I welcome you on, uh, I thank you, I clearly see that uh, this has developed into a very useful educational tool. Uh, uh, there are uh, two patterns which uh, seem to be emerging. Uh, uh, there is the live uh, review when uh, many of you are keying in and uh, asking online questions which we try to answer. And then uh, the second important part is the subsequent uh, CME review which uh, appears to be gaining traction also. Uh, keep sending me all your emails. Uh, once again, uh, we'll try to do our best to answer that. Uh, I will uh, take you through to the live case where uh, Dr. Sharma and Dr. Kinney should be joining us uh, for another uh, very exciting uh, uh, case for this morning. Uh, I'm also happy this morning to introduce uh, uh, and uh, invite uh, the Society of uh, Interventional Cardiology from Thailand and uh, the Society of Interventional Cardiology from Cairo, Egypt. Uh, these are the two new groups which have joined us and I am told uh, that uh, the live case has become an important part of their uh, journal club. Uh, uh, with that, uh, I'm going to pass you over to uh, Dr. Sharma and uh, he'll take you through the uh, review of the case today and what our plans are. Uh, good morning, Samin, uh, you're there? Yes. Okay, good morning. We are uh, just a little audio visual uh, kind of glitch. This is happens in the live case as usual. Um, you're okay? That uh, yes, we see. Start. Can we see it? Okay. We are live with you in the cath lab, and I see Dr. Kinney. She's uh, just about getting ready to start the case, and. Yeah. Uh, Samin, good morning. Uh, looks like all your hard work has uh, started uh, reaping rewards. Uh, 2,000 uh, or more uh, page reviews, 44 countries online. Uh, congratulations. Well, I actually, uh, Samir, I'm uh, very delighted and uh, pleasant uh, in terms of uh, what we basically uh, achieved. As you know, that this was my dream, besides just uh, treating, uh, uh, making our June symposium and complex treatment of cases that uh, monthly website we started in uh, July and thank to you uh, that you made this uh, dream come fulfilled and I was very pleasant as I mentioned uh, the, when I was made aware last week that overall now actually 2000 plus EDP. Uh, people uh, registrant uh, lo uh, log in to our website Hydrate. Hydrate in uh, 40 uh, plus 4 countries more importantly uh, you, they actually can give you the data also that how long when people come on live that uh, or log in that how many how long they stay almost and all of, almost all of them are staying through the entire case and they review the entire uh, part which is where I think is the CME value of it this is fantastic this exactly is the message that once you went to the our website even archived one that you stayed the average reader stayed full one hour that basically means that I'm sure they jump from one uh, June to July, I mean July, August, September, but average was one hour. That basically means that we are really providing this uh, high level of education to our uh, participant who wants to learn various techniques and all these uh, uh, five months uh, which actually have been archived. What I'll try to do is that uh, in uh, once we archive December, on the one side we will make it also the title that basically what was the key message was in that uh, one hour uh, discussion. Now, while uh, the Dr. Keeney is uh, ready to take a picture, if you are ready, this, uh, ready for the guy, yeah. Uh, I want to present with the first case, we keep the same format, that present the case, show the angiogram, go to some theoretical aspects 
and then come back and do the live case. Now this particular patient, uh, this is our sixth in the series, 83 year old male, presented two months ago with non stemmy and at that time he had a heart failure also and echo revealed severe LV dysfunction with EF of 25% because of his post infarction angina continued uh, and he has CKMB uh, of about 30 and uh, troponin of 12 went to the cath lab. He also had a risk factor of hypertension, high lipids, DVT has a filter and he has AAA repair, we will show you a part of that on angiogram and uh, chronic renal insufficiency with creatinine of 2 and clearance of 36.8. He has been on good medical therapy and at that time when we cath him actually uh, we found EF little better than what was said in the echo, maybe part of the medical therapy improved uh, because of diuretics and so and he had a three vessel disease complex LED diagonal bifurcation but ulcerated LPL1 felt to be cause of the non stemi that was a culprit vessel and had about 70-80% PDA uh, as I said the EF was 45%. That time we intervened the LPL1 and uh, patient uh, went home and today has been brought back for the PCI of the calcific LED diagonal bifurcation. Now if we can go back to our live uh, uh, the, from the cath lab. Uh, from the Cine point of view that you can see the difficulty being encountered uh, by uh, uh, Anu uh, in terms of the tortuosity and going through the uh, AAA stent graft. I mean, the patient has a lot of work done peripherally and uh, therefore uh, it is a little difficult to uh, use a long sheath along with the tarumo wire. Um, what uh, the sheath is, uh, Anu? You want to say hello? Yeah. yeah. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Anu. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, Good on, uh, Anu, how much problem did you have uh, getting in uh, access there? I think uh, the uh, uh, pulse was uh, pulse very good. Just uh, we were able to. I was able to get in just uh, one stick, but uh, subsequently there's a lot of tortuosity in the iliac. And if I can show you the angiogram here, if it, I'm sure letting it play. See that is where he has had the stent graft and lot of tortuosity as well as calcium he has a filter also uh, IVC filter and our problem was just at that uh, distal aortic bifurcation lot of resistance and probably some plaque so we had to be very careful so what we did was in this kind of situation when you have a lot of tortuosity and especially if a patient has already had repair or stent graft and as you know we are a center uh, for uh, this kind of aortic procedures uh, with uh, Michael Marin, Dr. Grip, all of them doing this aortic procedures. So before procedure, after procedure, they too come back to for a cath. So we, uh, you know we do see this situation all the time. So in this situation, the best thing is you use your glide wire, which is a tarumo. You get access. You can uh, uh, with the five French or so use a glide wire, which will give you a good support, and then you change over to your long sheet which is a 45 centimeter long sheet which goes uh, almost up to the arch. Show, show how far it goes up. So here, now the sheet, I was able to get the, and this is so where it's Descending it is. Yeah. This actually, if you see, it's in the descending almost uh, further down, only because there's so much tortuosity. Um, and this is the sheet we also use when we're doing chronic total occlusions also, so that it gives very good support. So now we don't have to worry about the distal aortic bifurcation and uh, iliac tortuosity uh, when we, if we at all we have to do multiple uh, exchanges. I think those are very, very useful points uh, considering that the number of patients whom we are intervening are going to be having uh, these previously done procedures. Uh, Samin, you will continue with uh, our, uh, your discussion well, on this yeah, topic. Actually, the, uh, quickly uh, ready for the case, uh, you see the angiogram. It's a, uh, more of a, mo a moderate to severe inferior hypo, little bit of anterior hypo, and uh, but very well preserved ejection fraction. Yep, uh, reasonably well. Yeah. Okay. Keep advancing. So just as soon as they put a catheter into the left main, I'm going to just continue this. Uh, no, nope. you need a maybe bigger one. This is 3.5. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Go four. Go four. Don't even try. Good. Pull back. Four. Okay. Uh, the while we are changing the uh, changing the catheter, uh, the, you see this is the right coronary. Yes, a very a large tortuous large tortuous vessel. There are 60, 70 percent lesion in the PDA. Uh, there is a proximal about 30 to 50 percent 
ulcerated and uh, the the VL 3.5 just did not fit in as you saw uh, curled up so that we are going to go with the uh, with the VL 40 now clearly that uh, uh, whether you use a VL or EBU or CL curves that they are better from interventional point of view advancing your device and so uh, and therefore this we are trying with the VL. Now I, as soon as uh, Anu shows the picture then we will go with the, our uh, uh, the theme today and I actually theme today I am trying to make it uh, that a uh, lot about the various stent technology uh, that we will just talk about uh, what is in our uh, uh, stent horizon that what are the various stents we are going to see in next coming years and uh, what the data support uh, basically from the concept point of view that what we should be uh, where uh, we have kind of an ideal stent available at this time. Now this is the same what I also suggest that when you are engaging these catheters let the wire be there uh, in the because the your catheter will uh, uh, move may curl up so that you can just de-air it and try to put a wire um, yeah. that uh, wire but gives you that sir? additional strength in these complex cases. There is no 4.5 right? Yeah. Your 4.5 also. Some this is a very. Yeah. What did we use last time? The guide. Yeah, will die. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you, it's a very dilated. You know, this patient has a peripheral disease, aortic disease, and so. Take a deep breath. Yeah. Deep breath. Absolutely, the entire anatomy becomes a little more complex. And uh, another uh, good and useful teaching point for uh, people to do the is uh, that this is being uh, done in the LAO projection, which I think is a. Uh, a much better uh, idea. So you have the virus too. Yeah. Let's go with that. Now we are changing uh, to uh, now the 4.5. So now uh, while they are getting into it, the, let's uh, start our uh, the theme because it may take few extra minutes. Uh, and this is the case of the LED diagonal bifurcation. Uh, now we start with the, maybe the lecture for the time being. So we can take about 10-15 minutes uh, to answer uh, while uh, we are getting the pictures and the equipment ready. And that will be the topic today that advances in DES uh, anti restenosis technology. Now, what I am going to go through is this seven subheadings of the first generation versus second generation DES, reabsorbable polymer, polymer free DES, evolving stent technique to reduce thrombosis, and also which will include the reabsorbable stent itself and uh, drug coated balloon and drug infusion bifurcation stent technology and miscellaneous DES technology. Next, now first generation versus second. Now as you know that uh, numerous trials have been done uh, comparing Cypher versus Texas and this to me kind of meta analysis uh, published by Shoming uh, in uh, Jack last year which sums it up that in the first generation DES, next, the randomized trial uh, and registry data supported superiority of the Serolimus eluting stent cipher over paclitaxel in reducing TLR and there was some question about decreased stent thrombosis there was no difference in myocardial infarction or death. Next but uh, clearly the idea was to push the field further and this is where we are with the second generation DES comparing our cipher and Texas or Texas Liberty that is the endeavor and the Zions or promise basically what has changed as you can see the strut stent thickness, the strut thickness which used to be over 100 in a triple digits, 130 or 140 micron has gone down to 80 or 90 micron and second is the thickness of the polymer. So this is basically will be the theme which I will show you the thickness of the polymer and the thickness of the stent struts are the future at this time. Now if we can stop here one second and go back to the cine that uh, the uh, if we can just yeah. This is the, the stent placed in the PL which is completely fine uh, and now we are ready for this LED diagonal bifurcation. You can see there moderate calcium in the LED diagonal actually LED more so and the bigger catheter being 4.5 selectively going into the circumflex. So you have to make it a counterclock rotation to engage selectively for the LED. If you want you can do a mag. 
very nicely yeah. illustrated. Uh, yeah. we, we have a much better picture and the lesion uh, exactly as you point out uh, complex bifurcating calcified uh, uh, LAD also I thought uh, uh, there is also subsequent disease in the beyond the ostium of the diagonal. Right, exactly. So that the more of a it, um, uh, type of uh, V, dis v disease that there is a disease in both uh, the diagonal as well as LED and proximal carina is not that much disease. But while we are working on it because of the moderate calcium, yeah, what is your plan? What the plan we have decided is that we are going to do rotational atherectomy of the LED and uh, we will just do a balloon and then decide on the stenting strategy whether we need a two stent or a single stent approach. So, because uh, the, if you see the LED, though lot uh, there's not lot of tortuosity, but only moderate calcium, we should be able to wire it with just rotor wire directly. So, Anu, is it possible for us to get one more view of this? Okay. Because of this high creatine, we didn't want yeah, to take okay. too many. No, no, views. that's fine. I, yeah. I, I, I leave you with that decision. Uh, uh, from this view, the the ostium of the diag. The diag. Uh, has some disease does, does not appear but to be. But they had ostium about uh, 60, 70, but after that there is a 90 right, percent uh, exactly. disease. Yeah, so it has to take uh, taken into account plus the size of the bag is uh, at least 2.5 to 2.8. All right, while uh, Anu will be working on putting a wire, we can go back to our uh, theme uh, where we were uh, and that basically that uh, the newer DES technology which are focusing on. Uh, decreasing the strut th strut thickness and decreasing the polymer. Now this is actually the data next uh, animal data from Renu Birmani uh, starting with the cipher on the left uh, the second being uh, Texas then uh, our endeavor then Zions and bare metal. As you can see that in terms of the intimal growth at 14 days and 28 days with the electron microscopy that you can once you get to a thinner struts the stent starts getting covered. Next, actually also they have shown the area of the stent coverage is significant once you use uh, the uh, second generation stents. Now this is the data to show the endothelial dysfunction that uh, higher is the VEGF that you are more injury to the endothelium that clearly once you get to the second generation DES particularly most important being EES which is our Zions that have a very low uh, endothelial injury. Next, and this leads to our two drug, uh, two second generation DES now. Endeavor with the zetrolimus with the driver stent phosphoryl choline polymer and zetrolimus drug and second is everlimus with the Zions V or Promus uh, with the uh, flu fluorocarbonated polymer and the vision, uh, vision stent. And this uh, next, now I will show you some data of the Endeavor uh, data overall. If you sum it up basically shown that there may not be much difference in terms of mace but higher in trend towards slightly higher late loss and re stenosis compared to Texas stent. Uh, same thing for the cipher. So basically I had been endeavored uh, 3 and 4 that uh, higher re stenosis, higher intimal hyperplasia which we knew all the time because of higher late loss. Now the comparatively the, this is the ZES trial uh, for, uh, by Park comparing the Texas Endeavor and Cypher and you can see there that uh, the same message comes what was noted in the Endeavor trial that uh, in terms of the ischemia driven PVR uh, definitely higher with the Endeavor stent. Now the second ad advantage of the Endeavor being a stent thrombosis I will allude to later but uh, overall as I mentioned the major maze of the death and MI is not different actually the trials have shown that lower myocardial infarction. Uh, with the endeavor stent compared to cipher or taxes largely because of the lower side branch closure. Next, then scar registry, the same message that uh, higher uh, the re stenosis with the endeavor compared to, um, uh, to their competitor first and second generation stent. Uh, and next, then we go to the ever limus, our Zions, the many data, but I would skip the old data and just present the latest one, and that is the split 4 trial which was a Texas Express against uh, Zions and basically what we found is the primary end point of the target lesion failure occurred in 6.8 percent of cases versus Zions V being 4.2 and these were big cardiac death was identical lower myocardial function and lower TLR. Go to the next slide and this basically 
points to that lower TLR, lower MI, and lower MI largely because of the lower side branch closure. So that what we learned basically with the second generation, uh, our Zion system compared to Texas, that lower myocardial infarction and lower TLR. Next, there was some question about the diabetic uh, subgroups that shown that the benefit was truly non-diabetic. In the diabetic patients, numerically, although Zions we did better, 0.5 percent lower, but uh, no significant difference compared to a, compared to a Texas in a diabetic patient. Uh, this therefore basically points down to that maybe in the diabetic patient you need extra concentration of drug, and uh, that's what the future technology will uh, concentrate on. Next. And of course, the stent thrombosis, and I'll come back to the stent thrombosis issue later. That now we are talking about stent thrombosis of 0.16, they're less than 0.2 percent at one year. Next, there is also at the TCT they presented the data of the compare, which com compare the Texas Liberty with the Zions, about 200 for plus patients, and found the same message that lower event rate, uh, death, non-fatal MI, and TVR in the Zions group compared to Texas Liberty by number of about 3 percent. Uh, therefore, now even the improved Texas fared inferiorly to Zions uh, in this compared trial. So, the overall message basically is that second generation DES of the Zions V uh, did better compared to our first generation. Next, the what about uh, comparison of uh, Zions with the cipher stent and this is what everybody had been waiting and there was the ISAR test 4 presented in TCT and basically showed there was no different, there was slightly lower stent thrombosis uh, with the uh, with the Zions 0.7 versus 1.3, but at the same time trend towards lower restenosis from 13.4 to 10. So, it seems to be that despite people said well maybe it is the Everlimus and Serolimus same analog will have a same restenosis, not true that you found a lower binary restenosis trend towards lower binary restenosis by using a Zions versus Cypher in the ISA test 4. Test 4 also uh, the, uh, tested the various polymer degradable and there was no difference on that. But overall message was that Zions we did better compared to a first generation Cypher or Texas. Next, then there is the data from uh, X search. Uh, next slide. Uh, that is uh, from Patrick Soroy group. And again, you can see that from the TLR, from MI and stent thrombosis, the one on the right hand side, the orange bar has the lowest compared to bare metal, serolumus or paclitaxel. Now, there was insignificant, there were higher mortality, but the authors described that to a case selection because now more and more patients with more comorbid conditions are going for DES. Once you took that account uh, the, the, and multivariate adjusted, there was no significant difference, but point again was that in comparative trial from one center, Patrick Soroy, large number of patients that uh, the Everlimus stent have a lower stent thrombosis, myocardial infarction, and TLR. Next, then issue was reabsorbable polymer. Next slide. That can make it a point that if easy stent delivery, cheaper stent, if you can use a non-polymer, if you have results are same then it may translate into a better outcome. The question was that it is against the Texas, the cipher data also which was ISAR test 4 support the same notion that uh, in some cases that you can have a non-polymer just direct the drug on the stent. Next slide, that is the evolving stent techniques to reduce re stenosis, uh, I mean stent thrombosis we understand the stent thrombosis is the major issue particularly occurring after one year. Why one year? Because Plavix is con discontinued after one year. So, we need to be very careful uh, what we recommend to our patients. Based on the earlier data up to late stent thrombosis after one year with the first generation stent, we change our policy to give Plavix up to three years because it seems to be data from Renu Vermani and other that the endothelization and angioscopy data that stent do endothelize two to three years of first generation stent. But clearly that that time period can decrease further. Next slide. Then while we know the early stent thrombosis more in my opinion the technique and the compliance issue, next the late stent thrombosis has been uh, really looked into it and various mechanisms have come up. <coughs> Important being the discontinuation of the antiplatelet therapy, incomplete stent opposition and delayed endothelization. That this word delayed endothelization is very important because it has been shown that uh, our first generation stent your endothelization endothelium either dysfunctional 
or delayed. Next. And this actually leads to the data of the Endeavour DES. While I showed that from efficacy point of view, Endeavour DES did not do well over uh, competitors, but clearly has shown that after one year, chances of stent thrombosis uh, of a very late stent thrombosis are extremely low in the Endeavour DES trial. Next. Now, similar for the SPRIT 4, which is the contemporary uh, uh, basically acute, subacute, or late uh, up to one year extremely low. Now, clearly the, we need the data further, but we have the data from the SPRIT 2 and 3 that chances of stent thrombosis after one year is 0.1 percent with the Zions V stent. Next slide. The same thing happened in the compare that uh, Zions continue to have a lower stent thrombosis. So, the basically message was that second generation stent do have a lower stent thrombosis early as well as late. Next. Now, therefore, field is moving forward that can you uh, regenerate the cell growth of the stent and that is surface to encourage cell growth. There are various techniques most common which has come to the clinical use is the end EPC capture that endothelial progenitor cell antibody coated stent so that the circulating endothelial cells will stick to the stent and cause the rapid endothelization. Next and this is actually the genus bioengineered R helis stent uh, <coughs> seems to be very exciting rapid endothelization, initial data were plus, but now we actually have three trials which have shown uh, neutral or kind of negative in terms of, so the whether this will continue in this present form need to be seen in the healing trial. Next, the issue comes, what if you make the stent disappear, basically biodegradable stent and there are many companies involved in it. Abbott actually takes the lead with the bio uh, BVS stent platform and shown histopathologically that stent do disintegrate and disappears at 3 years and these are the data uh, with the OCT and showing that at follow up this Lancet paper few months ago that progressive polymer degradation, normal histopathological healing and restored vasoreactivity with a late positive remodeling. So, that in cases there have been a no case of stent thrombosis that was the next slide which is the cohort A. Now, it has gone to the cohort B which is the more complex cases 80 patient randomized and need to be followed for long term to really show the answer that could absorbable stent be an answer particularly in high risk situation. Problem with the absorb stent uh, at present is there is a elastic recoil there is about 30 percent recoil early, but there is a positive remodeling later. Next. Then drug coated balloon. Now, originally the data of uh, drug coated that you can have a drug seep through the stent in the multiple holes uh, makes exciting. The first uh, next slide which is instant restenosis in pooch cath trial showed very significant benefit. Next, but I think this probably has put to the rest in the latest PAP cat trial that is paclitaxel coated balloon uh, versus uh, our the cipher stent and showed higher thrombosis higher marker function and TVR. So, that uh, it seems to be that while uh, the drug coated balloon may work in some selected situation, there are ongoing trials for the peripheries, maybe some instant restenosis, but for clinical use may not be available. Next, now there is a concept of delivering the nanoparticle that injecting into the coronary with the affinity to the endothelium, stick to it and release the drug delivery over time and some trials are ongoing using paclitaxel suspension. Next. Then bifurcation stent technology which we have spoken quite a bit in the past that uh, to cover the ostium many techniques have been suggested. Next, but at the same time now we have may numerous stents are being uh, investigated at this time uh, Boston scientific AST petal stent uh, with a 2 millimeter lip to me it looks like very exciting, but none is available for clinical use yet. Davax um, access plus stent particularly for the left main showing the very good data we need uh, also is a very promising. Next. Then issue some uh, DS technology I want to come the conclude that uh, the issue out the thrombus embolization the vein graft there is a trial uh, ongoing next slide uh, of uh, the M guard stent which is a membrane with a very thin uh, holes. So, that uh, all the material is just uh, uh, trapped behind the stent struts and do not embolize. Next. The one stent can be used for multiple lesions is the extent that these are the 6 millimeter slotted tubes attached with a li small link which can be broken and you can use one stent at a 6 millimeter interval uh, uh, of the multiple uh, multiple stents if necessary 
um, at multiple legions, same stand and will really be very cost effective. Next, the last being the very small stand that you over the wire, which is 0 0.014, which can go through your balloon in a distal vessel uh, of the cardiment, uh, uh, the company working on it. Next, uh, therefore, uh, if uh, the I would just uh, conclude what basically going on at present is that the DES, the present uh, when deployed has a stand drug and polymer, and therefore we learned that the drug disappears in few months. Next slide. Then of course the polymer is left. If the polymer can disappear, degradable polymer leaving the bare metal stand uh, is one way where the science is going in terms of the new D DES techniques. Next slide. And the lastly is uh, issue about the bioabsorbable stands. That is that stand is start disintegrating in nine to uh, next slide uh, nine months and then twelve months and then finally at about three years the stent is completely gone and this basically means uh, that now no metal is left. Uh, this again need to be a proof of concept and need to be seen that how they are going to do in our clinical life. With that note, uh, I know are we ready for with our case now? Samin, yeah. uh, excellent uh, overview uh, brings us uh, up to speed with uh, what we can expect and uh, uh, two take home messages I can even uh, add further. One I think uh, consistent with uh, what you have mentioned with the theme about the DES uh, has been the focused update where DES is now uh, recommended even for uh, STEMI interventions and the secondly I share with you the uh, exuberance about OCT as uh, emerging another wonderful uh, tool uh, for us to evaluate that. Uh, uh, anu, you the case is in your hands. Uh, Twenty minutes for you to demonstrate to us. Uh, this can be done uh, uh, safely, effectively, yes. and uh, perfectly. Yeah, no problem. So we have this rotational lathorectomy ready. We were able to wire just with a rotor wire uh, because it's a straightforward uh, without angulation. We took a 175 bar. Uh, we go, got the speed at uh, 155 outside the body. Angiomax uh, going in, we have an ACT of 330. Now, just, just to make a point on uh, this patient with the renal insufficiency, and I know there is a very important subject where uh, everybody, the new terminology is uh, acute kidney injury. And uh, we, uh, as uh, we discussed earlier, more and more we are seeing elderly patient, and when they come to us, what we normally see with them is uh, peripheral vascular disease, which you already showed, and renal insufficiency. So, I'm just going to do all the three steps again. Samin, so, what is your uh, a kind of uh, angiographic uh, cut off uh, where you will or will not use the rotablator? Yeah, no, I think the, one of the issues remains that it is a very tortuous uh, lesion, and if you can uh, more than 290 degrees turn, but we also learn that in those cases, if you don't use rotablation, even with the buddy wire technique, you may not be able to get your stent in. Um, and uh, uh, sometimes it is possible and sometimes it is not. But therefore, contraindication point of view, there is no true contraindication. What it will make it is use a, a smaller bar size. Then maybe go with a 1.25 bar only. And uh, what you decide to do rotational track me in our opinion is, once you see the heavy calcium uh, before uh, in the without even cardiac cycle, that is telling you that there is a high, uh, the, it's a moderate to severe calcification, which is our B ACCHA classification. Uh, now, as uh, Anu has done, polishing you do one more, uh, and then we'll just go with the rotation technique. Very rarely we decide in our lab uh, that uh, the uh, that use of uh, rotation me by the IVAS. Actually, the uh, in ACC. Uh, after the one of very uh, prominent uh, IVAS session, I have been asked uh, to uh, present the data. What we do at Sinai basically that we, we use IVAS in about 10 15 percent of cases, but the decision is made clinically. So, the, I would just uh, my task will be in ACC to answer the question that do you need IVAS or you can have a great result like we are having at Sinai just based on the uh, selected use of IVAS in 10 15 percent of cases only. And as you know that I, we actually have shown uh, even the left main intervention and this is what uh, will put everything together for uh, that presentation. Uh, and uh, the usually just uh, angiographic uh, uh, 
uh, the criteria and not necessarily the IWAS uh, will decide. Now, some people say, well, if your balloon does not go, that means it's a, a rotational threat. That may be it or sometimes based on the IWAS. But I think it's a equally okay as long as you have trained your eyes to do a uh, angel, uh, have done it by angiogram. Uh, now, sometimes, of course, the issue about the superficial calcium comes in that maybe it's a superficial calcium, you don't need a rotational threctomy. That's an issue which uh, I think it occurs in very small percent of cases. The original data from uh, uh, from Washington Hospital Center with Gary Wynn showed that isolated superficial calcium occurs maybe in 15 percent of cases, so very small. But majority of them either deep or superficial and deep. So that once you see the calcium, in my opinion, it is the calcium in the lesion unless proven otherwise. Now, as you can see that uh, Anu has wired the diagonal already and now ready to put us, you know. So we mean wired what? the diagonal with the uh, fielder wire yeah. and we are going to wire the LED with the run through. Going back to the point of uh, renal insufficiency, if we can, uh, the way we deal with this kind of patients when we have a creatinine, we actually have a protocol for a diabetic patient with creatinine of uh, 1.5 and non-diabetic when they are about 1.8 and higher, most important if the EF is okay, we hydrate them minimum 2 or at least 2 to 3 hours outside or once they are in the room that uh, they get a bolus and uh, then they get a mucomist. Uh, soda bicarb actually uh, we rarely use because majority of the time they do uh, have some kind of LV dysfunction or uh, valve problems uh, or most important imp uh, contraindication is especially if the patients have a high blood pressure. So just with hydration and mucomist uh, and the other important thing which we always focus on uh, in this particular lab is the dye that we use and like uh, I already showed that very important in this kind of uh, patients who have a creatinine anywhere uh, in above 1.5 we are so careful with the dye that we use, we do limited pictures. If it is a diagnostic and PCI, when we know there is high creatinine, we would do a left picture in AP caudal, AP cranial and uh, you know uh, LV gram again with couple of cc's of dye and one picture of the right in LAO cranial and then do the PCI. Goal is not to have dye use more than 100 cc. Uh, we have done more than uh, uh, to date more than 5,500 uh, intervention this year and not a single patient have required dialysis. And that is an important point. Remember there are two things uh, actually just to adjust the say get a 3 uh, 20 NC Voyager also. Yeah, that um, the two things. One, the bicarb. Remember the initial data were very exciting and we were using bicarb also but I can tell you we paid more price of using bicarb than anything else. Patients going into pulmonary edema and so uh, cough uh, and therefore we are actually very hesitant to use bicarb. I may use bicarb in a normal EF uh, patient uh, with a blood pressure of 130 over 80 uh, because they just uh, have this issue of the uh, pulmonary uh, that EP goes up very quickly because of bicarb. Second issue is the dye uh, that um, iodixinol versus your other non-ionic isosmolar versus low osmolar. You know the old recommendation of the 2007 focused update uh, recommended that uh, we should be using the isosmolar of the iodixenol. But then there was a major randomized trial of 400 plus patients called CARE. We were the part of it and uh, published in circulation and many other sub uh, studies from it uh, clearly answered the question. Actually, uh, the, in that uh, the uh, ISO view was uh, numerically better. Uh, we can take the rotavir out now. This is 3 0. Yeah. We are not going to the dial. Okay. Give me two five. Yeah, the, that we can take the rotavir out now. Uh, okay. That uh, two that basically uh, showing that uh, the uh, the ISO view was even uh, numerically better. So that recent guidelines have now included appended. You know, last two weeks ago when ACCH focus update have come, they have used all low osmolar uh, non-ionic contrast except omnipake, the, because that uh, actually have been associated with selectively somehow higher. Uh, uh, contrast nephropathy so that only issue remain is that as long as we are not using the omnipec uh, other iso osmolar uh, I mean non low osmolar uh, non ionic agents are uh, approved for or recommended actually that no longer it has to be iso osmolar okay.
Now this is a 2.520. Anu, where you felt the resistance with the balloon, do you think that area had been uh, uh, ablated with the rotational ethnic no, no. no, this is I'm in diagonal. No, yeah. no, no. The I, other I know, but just that with, area, oh. right? Ostium. No, I think that basically just tells uh, that right. there is a very tight lesion in the ostium. Exactly, which yeah. is what I it didn't look to be angiographically apparent, but as you pass the balloon, uh, I think that's exactly where it was hinging on. Yeah, and if there is, will be any issue, we'll use a cutting balloon at that ostium. Got it. So, I mean, now some people uh, would argue that uh, with some renal dysfunction and uh, particularly with those who don't have as much expertise with the rotational atherectomy that they may have done this case uh, uh, with just trying to get away with the balloon and uh, stenting, uh, would, uh, how would you respond to that? I would say that will be perfectly fine I, as long as what could be done that in this case that you go to a, don't create a high very pressure, high, high pressure. yeah, that, uh, that uh, don't create a high pressure uh, you know the, the dissection so that go with the balloon uh, even if you have to go uh, with a two uh, the two wire uh, and uh, uh, or use a cutting balloon this is not a heavy calcium which we call tram track that both both lines uh, or uh, that both vessel wall you can see it with a calcification and so uh, therefore in this particular case I would not say that the rotational atherectomy is must compared to the cases which we have shown you before uh, that uh, where rotational atherectomy is a must. In this particular case, it could be done with a high pressure dilatation of the mid LED, you can see here, or by using the cutting balloon. Yes. And other important point also, if you, uh, we never took a picture after we did a balloon of exactly. the LED. Right. We did the balloon of the diag, then we took a picture. And also, important thing is we always leave the balloon in the guide that uh, less than 1% chance of uh, any event of perforation that we have the balloon in the guide to quickly go and seal that uh, area. Very valuable uh, point, uh, Samin. A very interesting, uh, fascinating question from outside the country. Would you let your fellows do this case? 100 percent. Yeah. Ask Absolutely. them. They are right here. Yeah. All right. Yes. Yeah. 100 percent. Yeah. So now, now our strategy. Now you can see this case will require long stents, right? I mean, there is a disease in the LED. They both are long. And both are about three millimeter vessel. I think go we go with a two three o uh, twenty eight zines. We have yeah. uh, actually one yeah. three o and one two five twenty eight. Yeah, no, I was thinking that you'll probably go with a two five for the diagonal, but uh, two point seven five. Okay, okay. Seven let's five, make right. a compromise. I agree with that. We'll go with a two point seven five compromise. Let's Samin, in dilated, keeping no? with yeah. the theme of your presentation, a, a few other very interesting questions have come, and in. uh, one of them I'll read to you as two thousand and nine comes to an end. What do you think was the biggest PCI advancement of the year? That's a very, well, I would say that two point of view. And uh, one, that from the standpoint of view, the data of the spirit trial, super. That just basically uh, showing that now we are talking about 0.2% stent thrombosis. The spirit followed by the compare, followed by ISAR test 4, everyone. Uh, in a plus 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 for the ever luminous eluting stent so that this to me is uh, one of the very important from interventional point of view and if you ask from the interventional with the pharmacotherapy point of view there has to be the plato trial that now we will have an agent by hopefully by next year of astrazeneca that uh, which is a reversible you can send the patient for surgery in 36 hours and it is associated with the lower strength thrombosis, lower maze, more importantly, lower mortality, lower mortality than uh, our uh, clopidogrel. And uh, this is done with the 600 milligram of clopidogrel, so that cannot be uh, uh, the control, you know, uh, can, uh, cannot be questioned that this did not happen because of the uh, TIMI 38. TIMI 38 it was 300 milligram, it was a 600 milligram dose, and uh, therefore those will be the two. One for pharmacotherapy and second for the stand, which actually have been our feeling. Now, we started using Zions uh, uh, and Promus, edge of uh, last year, majority being Zions. The, we use DES in about 88% of our cases. Those 12% where we are not using the, use the side branch stand first. 2.7528 first uh, into the diagonal. Now, the, where we don't use the DES is will be when patient cannot take uh, Plavix, whether uh, unreliable or non-compliance, or uh, patient going for uh, you know surgery and so, 
and otherwise uh, DES and of that 90% now uh, in our lab is the science and we actually have seen overall we just completed data because I am completing for uh, our we make a 30 day phone call and many of these patients are after one year we have stopped the plavix the stent thrombosis is 0.18% so they are extremely low the, there is no question about it that it is a low low stent thrombosis this is what seen by various trials. And second issue what we found that by using the Zions, while we are still doing our 25 uh, PCIs a day, our lab instead of ending at 10 p.m., now ending at 9. We saved about one to one and a half hours. Although we paid the price now because one of the lab is being, uh, uh, you know, upgraded. Uh, therefore, now we are going almost midnight uh, for last two months. But for last uh, almost one year since last July, August, that uh, by using Zions, the procedure time decreased and that actually had led to uh, uh, overall the uh, saving uh, the cath lab time. Actually, my uh, the fellow uh, uh, JK, you can comment on it. You did some analysis, right? Uh, we have sent it for uh, uh, ACC. What did we find here? We've done some uh, analysis of Cypher versus Zions. We've done some analysis of Cypher versus Zions. We found that the Zion stent compares very favorably in its deployment characteristics, so we found reduced fluoro time, we found reduced fluoro time, reduced contrast use with the Zion stent compared to the Cypher. So it looks very promising for the Zion stent and that reflects I think what we see clinically that it's a very easy stent to deploy compared to the Cypher stent whereas I'm sure all the listeners will be aware we had a lot of trouble getting past long lesions, calcific lesions, the stents regularly got hung up but with the Zions we seem to be able to deliver them far more easily and far more effectively. Yeah, uh, sounds, sounds very interesting data uh, and uh, uh, hopefully we will uh, we'll see it uh, published and hear more about it. Anu, I noticed you had uh, no problem at all advancing uh, the stent in the diagonal. Yes, uh, you see that it is. I think both can go further 3 millimeters so they cover that lesion. Right. We remember there is no proximal disease, you can go further, go, go, both of them 3 millimeters. So this will be by definition the V stenting. People do ask me what is the difference in SKS versus V. As you know, that, uh, this is what uh, we have published also, that if your carina overlap of the stent is less than 2 millimeter, then it's a V, more than 2 millimeter is SKS, although we always try to keep our overlap in single digits. I think this looks good. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, somebody has uh, picked up on your theme uh, from uh, the fact that uh, uh, the Zions has now become your workhorse uh, stent. Uh, the question they have asked me specifically is where would you not use the uh, Zion stents in practice today? Yeah, I would say that one group which I would not use it that uh, moderate size uh, LED diagonal bifurcation because and there is a proximal disease like uh, using a kissing stent because there is still some proximal as dissection I have seen. The majority of the time, go again, uh, always we do a two inflation, uh, about uh, 10 seconds, uh, basically second inflation. How uh, many atmospheres are you on? About there? 10 atmosphere okay. and that is the key. If you need to go to higher atmosphere, you can go later uh, with the negative. Diag higher. Yeah. yeah. Actually, diagonal we can go a little higher if you want to do one third inflation. But uh, the would be, still I think we need to know a little more in the bifurcation. You can go 12 here, 14, good. And, uh, uh, the and second will be the osteal left main. I am still unhappy RCA. with the osteal left main and osteal RCA negative. Yet, that, there, yet there is a trial being designed yeah. exactly for that. I know that's a. They will use the split prime, uh, which is a second slightly different. Uh, yeah. Should we post to that diag? Just that one. Will distal? No, we'll see. Mid. Yeah, yeah. The, there is, seems to be a little diagonal, not fully expansion, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll in the, take prox it out in the uh, proximal portion, but that may be just yeah. the curve of the vessel too. Exactly. Mm. Therefore, we're going to deflate both. But the excel trial of the left main, I still think that uh, the osteal still remains the issue with the Zions. And actually, personally, uh, I have um, few cases where osteal LAD, uh, sorry, osteal left main, after placing the Zions, that have to put a cipher inside even 3.5 and then post dilated with a 4.0 uh, to have a really expansion of the osteum. And this is uh, actually had been uh, to me limitation of the present Zion stent because of the uh, stent uh, strut thickness and so. Clearly the next generation of uh, these uh, drug looting stent uh, going with the not cobalt chromium, they are using a platinum and uh, should be more radio opaque but at the same time uh, gives you more uh, 
strength uh, so that they are uh, more stiff and can expand the ostium. So that uh, coming back to the point, uh, Samir, I am uh, really uh, my personal feeling was that from the Zion's point of view, I know that they have prom uh, started. Take both Should of them out. Take no, no, no. We'll take, take both of them out. We'll take a picture. We'll see. We'll see. It shows. No, no. The air will come with the two. Once you have two balloons, and so I usually just try to take them out because there is always the air trapped inside. Now these are the cases. Same. There is an issue maybe in terms of the distal wire per for so which we not want to create any, but uh, patient is uh, on uh, Angiomax uh, and uh, if ever happen simply just stopping and proximal balloon dilatation will take care of that part. Uh, all cases in our cath lab now, um, you want to pull the other wire, yeah, uh, are done uh, with the Angiomax and even uh, STEMI, but uh, in some cases we do use uh, 2B3A in about 18 to 20 percent of cases in a bolus form only. They're just the bolus. Uh, now we are ready to take a picture. Uh, let's see and what we looks outstanding. There is that little concern in the yeah. diagonal, uh, which I I, I I don't know now. The decision is going to be whether you want to expand there with the short balloon. Yeah. Let's get a two seven five twelve. So just uh, because as long as you are not coming to the ostium, uh, will be okay. Uh, to just go into the diagonal only. Samin, what is going to be your anticoagulant uh, strategy here? Yeah, now this particular patient, uh, the because of uh, the age, otherwise these kind of complex cases, you can make it a point based on the Triton trial that use a Presagrul, but it's a uh, more than 75 years of age, uh, and patient has some issue about the GI bleed, which I didn't mention. No, he uh, has uh, other uh, his platelets about 150, and uh, he love. Uh, last procedure, he in fact had some groin bleeding, and you've seen how his per, uh, PVD prevents us uh, from using vascular closure device. Uh, we did check the uh, plavix uh, sensitivity last time; he is sensitive. And other important thing is he does uh, have a prostate problem, and uh, rare. I mean, one episode of uh, hematuria he has had. So, taking all this into account, I think uh, we cannot go to the stronger antiplatelet therapy. So, I mean, you could even pull out the wire out of the LED here, no? Yeah, we don't need it. And you just have the other wire. Go, go into the diagonal. Yeah, the, the question comes is that do you need to go? Uh, the post dilate all and uh, as you see that uh, it has been a quite uh, issue in terms of we basically post dilate the area which has not been expanded. Uh, this is what? This is so a 27512. Uh, question from, uh, question from uh, Guido Berger from uh, Switzerland uh, I, and I quote, to me this LAD diagonal lesion seems to be Medina 011, would T stenting not be the preferred technique? to cover the side branch ostium instead of V-stenting. Excellent question. What do you have to say? No, but you say V-stenting, right? No, they are saying… Uh, he is uh, suggesting would T-stenting not be the preferred prefer technique uh, rather than V-stenting? No, but remember right. it is a 0 1, 1 uh, Medina so that uh, you need to cover the T still will be the issue because T uh, will be that you need to cover it proximally and you do not want to cover proximally. Yeah. And then if uh, therefore in this particular case. I would not say uh, the T. In this particular case, I think uh, what we are doing here is the V stenting is the right approach uh, because of uh, there is no proximal disease and it is a large vessel, no proximal disease. Look, this is precisely why all this live cases and the questions keyed in can be so informative. Uh, how high had you gone, uh, Anu, with the… 20. Uh, excellent. Yeah, all once right. we post dilate. Uh, 20 atmosphere is the usual, sometimes you can go to higher. So, as, as you take the final picture, I want one of your nurses to tell me how many cc's of dye were used. Yeah, yeah, we use uh, 80. Excellent. So, you have stayed both within your 100 cc's. Yeah, 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 yeah. And With the bifurcation wrote everything. And within the 20 minutes to do yeah. the case. And 20 minutes plus uh, the fellows know how uh, upset I get when I see the dye going uh, beyond uh, uh, when we reach 3 digits. I said we got to learn to do angioplasty, dialysis angioplasty, I tell them. Anu, absolutely excellent angiographic result there.
and we can i think in the end although i am a one man one uh, view per guy but i think in this kind of bifurcation case right. it's reasonable to just take one more picture particularly maybe in the caudal view so that you know the separation full expansion whether it needs a uh, any extra dilatation the i think that p in my opinion requires that you have a lesion uh, of a 1 1 because remember that you need to have a distal lesion uh, uh, the proximal and distal lesion for the t to work well this came out very good here uh just to i mean uh, we have our uh, fellows right here i think i want uh, there was a question uh, from the audience saying how much we let the fellows do and what kind of uh, training they get here Uh, we have two fellows. One is uh, Jason. Actually, he got his uh, training in Australia. Then he was in NIH. Uh, did a lot of basic science, and he's been here. And I have uh, Roshan Patel, uh, who is here, who did uh, his cardiology fellowship uh, in the United States, finishing his uh, interventional fellowship and uh, going into private practice. So they both can comment what kind of training they get in Sinai and how comfortable they are in doing all these tough cases. Thank you, uh, Dr. Kinney. I can say it's Jason from Australia. I can say the training here has just been outstanding, and, and uh, the Dr. Kinney and Dr. Sharma were not lying when they said that uh, these are the kind of cases that normally um, the fellows would actually get to do the case, uh, and the attending would just be assisting us. And it's just a wonderful experience. The volume, the complexity, uh, and the people that we get to work with is just fantastic. So it has been a fantastic fellowship, and. Uh, To any other fellows out there that are thinking of Sinai, I couldn't recommend it highly enough uh, to do your training at. Uh, Jason, uh, uh, good words, and I'm glad uh, this is all uh, turning out to be extremely useful for you. Uh, Australia continues to be a very popular uh, nation from where I'm getting all these questions and the follow-up, and uh, I'm glad that's happening. Uh, Samin, uh, excellent yeah. job as always. Uh, yeah. Very nice Roshan. case. Uh, uh, Anu, final yeah. words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. one uh, minute. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at Mount Sinai, the fellow do the uh, uh, as H10 uh, do uh, uh, all kind of complex cases, and at the graduation, they are very comfortable to do the all kind of complex cases. That's a uh, key of this uh, training program. And and uh, I just to add that if we let them be on the uh, patient's head side, means they are the primary operator, and they know it. that as long as they are not making any mistake they will continue the entire case they make a mistake they come on the right side they just move the why if we can get to the last two slides just to sum it up our presentation one basically which i have put uh, uh, is that based on the available data that where we are in the des comparison of the cipher taxes endeavor and zines slash homus that is efficacy point of view it seems to be more and more the zines we actually gets even up little higher plus than uh, than cipher in terms of tlr taxes comes in the middle and endeavor is at the bottom then decrease in myocardial infarction largely because of lower side branch closure this has been shown is the very all the trials of the endeavor and zines our second generation stents are better than first generation there are no difference in terms of death safety early stent thrombosis maybe some data to su support endeavor and now we know to support basically the zines but latest stent thrombosis clearly has been that after one month and so that superiority of the zines against the competitor stent and that really uh, crossability trackability both uh, endeavor and zines gets the plus point and that leads to what we have in us in terms of market share that two third are being used with the zines and promus and more important next slide that we use only Uh, plavix for about one year now lastly that basically to sum uh, the take home messages next slide and that is the optimal technique and strategy are crucial to avoid any potential complication complex pci as shown here bifurcation lesion intervention remains a challenge pending approval of dedicated bifurcation des but don't be too hopeful i don't think we'll have any des technology before 2011 only when we will have a bare metal which is try to understand which is being investigated will be part of it but it's a bare metal stent where you can for the side branch and lastly the ever lumus eluting stent with the zines uh, trials have shown its superiority in randomized trials and registries and comes close to being a perfect des presently and for at least next few years to come with that note uh, we end up uh, our uh, today's uh, webcast with the last uh, um, ak's uh, word
Yeah. yeah, we just want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year and uh, we have a lot of uh, complex uh, interesting cases that we have uh, lion, uh, you know, lined up for the 2010. Uh, as of January of 2010, we will be starting our uh, relay webcast actually at uh, 9 a.m. because of a lot of requests saying that we, they want to delay, the West Coast wants to watch us, so we are making it uh, 9 a.m. Uh, of uh, Eastern Standard Time. Uh, so th with that, we just do our final clap for 2009. Okay. Uh, anu, Samin, uh, congratulations. Uh, best wishes to you for uh, happy holidays. Uh, uh, we will see you back uh, on January 19th, uh, 9 o'clock as was stated. And uh, I thank you for your support and let those questions keep coming.